you know. Um, yeah, this guy, I just met him last week or week before. I don't even remember how I found out about Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. A friend of mine from Michigan told me about a guy who lives here in Minnesota I should meet. So. <sighs> meet him, and he is really sharp. Yeah, he can see things. And, and um, yeah, where was I going to go? Oh, yeah, about this music. Uh, you know, there's certain music that's bad for you and some that's good for you. Mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. modern rock stuff, this modern rock, is set in a tempo and beat. It's what I call it, but he's got fancier words for the part of it. And I don't know enough about music talk and tell you, but it's actually bad for you and it's not good for your body. And that's why a lot of us that are sensitive don't like it, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, like me, I go to some restaurants and I can't stay there because they got this puke music going, you know. Right. And, uh, yeah, so I'm interested in that. Yeah, this guy's got lots and lots of books uh, on stuff, and he's read a lot. Mm -hmm. So I like to talk to people like that. Yeah, you learn a lot. Yeah. Yep, and it's um, people who are high tech. You know, that's getting got the, the equipment that they can. Yeah, uh, you know, and the music. Uh, you have to be careful what music we listen to because some of that music messes up your brain waves, so you don't. Your brain doesn't work properly. I know. That's why I don't really. I don't watch t television anymore. Really. Oh. Uh. Yeah, so I even, like I have I have an acoustic guitar. I kind of like play my own music, and you know, um, and I have a few you know musicians I like a lot, but they're like on a higher uh, vibration. But I think it's just better to be out in nature. That, that's all I want anymore is to be outside. Yeah, get away from all. I don't. I just naturally don't want to be around all this technology. As much as I like it, I just feel like it's it's depleting me. Yeah, and then, yes, correct. And then, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, well. Below the, well, I can below. weigh in on that. You know, Good. all this technology with the Wi-Fi, that really does impact your body energetically first, and then, you know, it kind of messes you up the other way. It really makes you tired. Mm -hmm. um, and it if it's almost... It's almost sometimes like when people are on the computer or on something all the time, they become almost in a zombie-like state. Mm -hmm. And that's why going out in nature is so important because it brings you back to being centered and, and grounded and knowing a uh, knowing that you you kind of lose when you're all, you know, on the phone or on the computer and, you know, tied up with stuff all the time. We... Uh, Tell you kind of a funny story. We went. <clears throat> we had to take our cars last night, or we chose to take our cars up to a covered parking because they had predicted storms. Some of the storms moving through. Uh, they were showing pictures of softball-sized hail, and I was like, "Oh, I don't want to have to fool with this because we don't have a house. Can't get them in the garage at this point." So we were going to take them to this covered parking garage. But before I left, I, I went outside and I connected to the spirit of the storm and I asked it if it could minimize the impact of hail by the time it got to our area. And everything seemed good. And I got ready to go back in and I asked, is the hail, is it, it was very generic, is, it, is the hail going to be uh, less here? In the story, is, the, is the hell going to be less? And I got a no. I was like, well, okay, we, we better take the car. So we drove up, sat in this parking car garage for two hours while this beautiful rainstorm with lightning and wind came. Not a single drop of hail was there. And on the way home, I was talking it through with my guides, and I said, what did I do wrong? <laughs> what, what did I miss on this? And they laughed at me, and they said, you weren't specific enough. You asked if the hail was going to be, if there was going to be hail. The hail was already gone. 
didn't ask the right question. <laughs> so we drove all the way up there and sat, sat for two hours for, for that lesson. It was funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing I I think we need to do is be specific in our dowsing questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I can see that now. <laughs> but I guess I got off on a tangent, but the point I was really going to make is how when I was trying to drive up to the place, my husband was in the truck and I was in the car, I turned the radio on and I we generally, we stopped listening to the radio at all in the cars. And I thought, well... I'm by myself, it's dark, let me, you know, try a little music. I couldn't find anything I could stand listening to. Oh. It made me feel like, I just felt anxious and I, I couldn't stand it. I had to turn it off. Yep. There's a lot of gas stations that are that way where you go to fill up a car with gas and I can't even pump the gas because we got the music blaring out to the gas pumps. You know? Oh, I know. Yeah, I just don't go, oh. I don't go to them in restaurants. I was a restaurant, gal had really loud, icky music, and I asked her to shut it down, turn it down. Oh, I can't. My other customers love this. And it was this most irritating stuff. I don't know how anybody could stand it. My wife and I said, we don't want to go back there again with that irritating, nasty music that just, yeah, it's just stupid. No. I get a little carried away in that music stuff. Yeah. But isn't that interesting? Didn't ask the right question. Or didn't that, you yeah. asked the right question, but not in the correct manner or something. Well, I, I didn't ask. The, what happened was basically the, the hail had been depleted. There was no more. And there was not enough, I guess, atmospheric disturbance to cause more. Ah. I just, you know, and I, I was like, well, I... I thought I said, is there going to be any, well, you know, will, will you lessen the effect of the hail? I think that's where I said, will you lessen the effect of the hail here? Because I asked instead of it being softball or golf ball size, whatever they were predicting at the time, I said, could you make it like marble and dime size? That would be, <laughs> that would be preferable. And I think what I asked was, will you lessen the effect? No. I don't need to lessen the effect. There isn't any. <laughs> oh, who knew? That's just too... But, Funny, yeah. Well, the the beauty of it is, is it made me think about being more focused and asking. And the, I guess, the really good thing I got out of it is they are communicating with me. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and nature is. We saw some spectacular lightning on the way. You know, you could see like these big streaks going across the sky and up and down and it was oh. just it was phenomenal it was so pretty I was like I wish I could just sit here and watch it but we didn't <laughs> yeah well that's a wonderful story oh so you got you got connected in a special way. That's great. Because by doing that, you got, so you can, uh, the next time you'll know to ask in a different way so you get a more precise answer. So, Very uh, true. Yeah. Huh. Oh, I have one more thing to tell you, Don. What's that? I use your I use your blessing every day at the house. Okay. And I bless I bless the house and the trees and the, the grass and the flat. I bless, I bless everything, every possible thing that could be there to be blessed, I use your blessing on. Oh. And I end up saying it usually three or four times. But the part when I get to the trees and talk about the trees and, and all of that and say, you know, I'm including you in this, this is for you. Sometimes there can be no wind, and when I start blessing the trees, the wind comes up, and the trees kind of like sway. It's like they're waving. Really? Yeah. It's, it's been wow. really it's been really phenomenal. Wow. So thank yeah. you for sharing that blessing. It's just been it's been wonderful. Yeah, I gotta get it typed. I got 
type Megan typed it for me most of it I got I think I should post that on our on our list and then you could give that testimonial it would be wonderful if you could record it too and say it because your voice and the way it, it you say it it just makes it it just makes it really special yeah I need to record it and I I don't know if I should just do it on my cheap old home mics I got here or go to a, somebody's got some really good mics microphones I got a friend that's got really good high quality mic you can maybe get him to do it for me yeah I I have a recording app on my iPhone and when you said it last time I recorded it and I told you mm -hmm. that I recorded it and it's really good ah oh, great yeah have you been playing it every day well I can't say I've been playing it every day because I don't know why. I forget for some reason. But <clears throat> are you past thirty? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm past thirty. Okay, that's an excuse. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm past a few more uh, decades too. <laughs> but um, I, I do notice that uh, it, it does. It just brings a beautiful vibration, and I do it in the house, in my apartment. So I guess the vibration is my is in my apartment, which it needs. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. I was interested. I was on Skype with a couple of gals, uh -huh. and we've been chatting back and forth for a couple of years, and. And this gal, one gal, took a, I said, well, take a, a bowl of, or a glass of water and check the aura. And she checked it with her pendulum. <clears throat> okay, and then I said something about blessing it or something, see how far that goes out. And that went out so far. Then the other gal says, well, say Don's blessing. Well, she said, I don't know it. Well, she said, just say, I bless you with Don's blessing. And she did. The aura went way out further. Wow. So we might have a yeah, that's good. shortcut. I don't know. You know. I'll say it with Don's blessing. Mm -hmm. that's that wouldn't be as much fun, though. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't get the feelings and uh, everything into it. Yeah. But I thought that. Well, was, you know, I, hmm? that is interesting because the frequency, the universe, you know, the, the, the universe, that the knowledge of all that is that we connect to and downplaying. It knows stuff that we have no knowledge of. And oh, I no. remember how Bubba said the other day on the post, he said talk, people were talking about cleaning the Pacific Ocean water, and he said use the frequency of hemp. Hemp, yeah. And somebody said, what is the frequency of hemp? And I didn't get a chance to respond, but you know, I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The universe knows. The dowsing system knows. And right. I thought about how we get in our way sometimes by thinking we have to know the details. Yep. And we don't. Oh. We can just say to the universe, please find the frequency of hemp and use it to help heal, and this is what we want to bring. Yep. And that's what Raymond always says. Does the dowsing system understand whatever it is he wants to douse about? Yes. Okay. And he will ask, and he goes, I don't need to know the details. He says, that just gets me in the way. Yep, he said, the I more I know, the less effective sometimes I can be. Yep. It's just like when I take the hooks and cords off people. You know, I, you know, I ask to take off the psychic hooks, and then I ask to take off the energy hooks, and then I ask to take off the hooks known and unknown to us. And sometimes we get a lot of them coming off. Ah, uh, so yeah, that's an important one. That's really important. Yeah, to get the known and unknown. Yeah, and the hooks, all the hooks. Yeah, all get all the hooks off because I've looked. You know, I can sometimes see people at a distance. You know, uh -huh. when I'm, they're not in person. 
and uh, they'll they'll have the cords cut, uh -huh. but they'll have the hooks in there yet, and the cords hanging down outside of. Uh -huh. Well, if you got that, I'm thinking. You know, I'm just kind of using my logical brain, but I would think it'd be easy for other cords and to get hooked onto the cords that the, are sticking out of you, because mm -hmm. they're still sticking out of you. Mm -hmm. They're not completely gone. So when we unhook the hooks and then uh, send the hooks and cords off wherever you want to send them and I've got my own way of doing it and uh, you know and then they're they're gone everything's gone so there isn't something to come just plug into you know mm -hmm. like if you watch the movie Avatar you know where they're flying around with that on that animal's back and they, mm -hmm. they reach up with their ponytail and hook onto it I kind of think of it as that way. You know. mm. I, um, I, know, I know our imagination, uh, we, we don't use it enough, you know, because um, like we, we think with our logical mind about these things and maybe we need to open up to all kinds of possibilities that our logical mind can't even imagine. Yep, I call that just tuning in, you know, like when you do healings. The more you do them, the more you get tuned in, the more you get tuned in, the more you're told about different things to do and ways of doing it. Uh -huh. So it seems like, you know, lately I've been doing lots of healings with people in the groups, and, the, and uh, every time I do a healing, I get a something added to do, you know, that I never thought of, never knew before. And there's not any training books I know of, you know. How many training books do you know of or modalities that train to take the hooks off first and then send the hooks and cords away? Does anybody ever? Zero. Heard? Zero. Yeah. And then I got told to do that. And I tell you what, it works so well. You take those, you take the hooks off first, and then you take the hooks and cards. And what I've been doing now, I've been told, is I send them out 100 miles away, and then I send them all up to the light to be reprocessed so that nothing can get energy off of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees with that or not, but it's the people I've been working on seem to like it. Oh. Mm -hmm. so, and it's amazing to me that these, oh, I know a lot of shamans that they'll, they'll have a cord cutting. Yeah. Uh, a cord cutting gathering or a cord cutting party or whatever you want to call it. And I think, gosh, why not just teach people to cut the cords themselves? And they can cut the cords every day, you know, and not just cut the cords, but take the uh, uh, the hooks, hooks and cords off, and you know, send them all away. No sense having the hooks sticking there too. So how how would you teach that? Oh, how would I teach that? I suppose I'd have to do it and have it recorded and. Copy it down. Uh, so it's through like a blessing or something. <laughs> no, but it, you could do it with dowsing though too. You could ask your dowsing system, right. and you could do it with a pendulum or a bobber, and yep. connect and and go through a process of removing the the cords. I mean the hooks, and yep. then the cords and sending them wherever you know. Ask. Maybe maybe only Don is supposed to send his forever. Maybe your guides will tell you to do something different because everybody's, mm -hmm. everybody's different. And then, you know, as long as you fill up that area that's left with yeah. light or 
yeah. there are many different things. Sometimes I'm told to put different things in. So, you know, ask your guides for help with that because it's, it's always different. But if you think of it this way, and I, lo I love what you're saying, Don, about teach people to do it every day. We wash our hands every day to get dirt off from just general everything we touch and do. And literally, every time we have a communication with somebody, we're probably, <laughs> excuse me, we're probably doing some kind of energetic cording or hooking. Oh, 100% that, chance that, you are. Yeah, yeah. And some of it's beneficial, some of it's not. But when the interaction is over, you know, it's like daily hygiene. <laughs> I know that yeah. sounds kind of silly, but that's kind of what it's all about is it's an energetic clearing. Yeah, it's very logical to me. Very, very logical. Yeah. Clean it off. And I, I know some dowsers that do it twice a day, you know, clearing but yeah, if, if we clear clear off at all, and I do it for myself and my wife and my son and a friend. I clear off all the the hooks, loosen all them up. I do first. I do the psychic, and and I do it all levels and all levels of dimensions, all dimensions, and then I do it uh, in all lifetimes, past, present, and future. But lately. I've been getting in more depth. I just don't say, and, and, and I don't know why. I'm not saying it's a better way or not, but I've been going, you know, like get the mind, the body, the spirit, the soul, take them off there, you know, <clears throat> and take them off the uh, past lifetimes, future lifetimes, this lifetime, you know. And uh, seems to be getting more dramatic effect when I do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I take, and then well, I don't. I ask my team to do it, but I ask the question: take them, take them off. Um, yeah, okay. I take them off the the mind, bodies. It's easier to do it when I'm in the zone. Here, I'm just talking. So the mind, body, spirit, soul. The energy field, the aura field, above their head, below their feet, all around them, and any etheric connection they have. And, you know, I really have been getting in depth with that. I should probably record one, but I can't just say it as easy as because once you get in the in your zone, your dowsing zone, or whatever you want to call it, then it just flows. You know, it's like Oh, the right words just flow out. Oh, yeah. And the words that, you know. But, yeah, after you do that for a while and get to the point where you're clearing all the hooks and then taking the cord and sending them back, it, it almost seems a little bit... I don't know how to say it, not very effective to just go around and cut cords, you know, have a cord cutting ceremony once every, you know, six months or so, however often they do it. You might as well do it on a regular basis, like every day, and then after a few weeks of doing it, or, you know, there's, there's days you don't, I don't have hardly any on it, so it seems like, and there's some days I got a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, is that because you're sensitive that you have lots of things and you're to, etc well I, I can't hear you you have okay. to speak up or put a mic on or something I'll put a mic on yeah it doesn't do any good talk without hearing yeah okay so can you hear me now yep Okay, so <clears throat> some days you said that you have more to clear than other days, and would you say it's because um, of who you spoke to or what's coming up for you? Um, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. 
all, yeah. all of the above. <laughs> yeah, and that can make a difference too. And it could be that some days I'm more connected when I douse. And I think when you get more connected, things work faster. Mm -hmm. So say if I'm not if I'm not connected, it's good someday. Some days it may take me 15 minutes to get it done. If I'm really connected, boom, the team gets it done in just minutes, you know, or seconds. So mm -hmm. That's kind of a guess. I don't know. What does anybody else think? Anybody else got any ideas on why sometimes it goes yeah. faster and sometimes it doesn't? Goes fast? I think it's your connection to the person, maybe too, you know. Um, well, I'm talking. And it, I'm I'm talking just my personal stuff. Okay, I'm not talking about doing it with somebody else. I've never really thought about whether that was faster or slower. What I was thinking about is when I'm working on myself and my wife and a friend and my son. We do four of us at the same time. Oh. Maybe you just don't, you don't have as many, you know, there's not as, maybe there's not as, uh, they're not as difficult or as deeply embedded or attached. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's part mm -hmm. of it. And it, you know, I think some of it may have to do with the other people's, um, I, I hate to use the word neediness, but I think those who put hooks and cords in us, a lot of that is a, it's a need for energy. It's a need for something that we're giving them. And maybe some people have more needs of that than others. So maybe some days that, you know, you've dealt with people who weren't as needy or having to be as deeply involved. Mm -hmm. that, that's just a thought. I don't know. Hmm. Sounds interesting. So interesting thoughts. Yeah. Or it depends upon, you know, let's say if we watched a movie, would we have more hooks and cords in us? Or if we read a book that uh, there's psychic hooks in? Well, you know what happened to me once? This is strange. I was, my mom had given me this book to read by Stephen King uh, for something to do over the summer. And I was like, I don't know if I want to read Stephen King. He's pretty scary now. Um, not that I could read it before, but now I couldn't. So she said, oh, it wasn't that bad. So I started reading it, um, and there were, it was, it was Danny Thomas. It was, uh, I don't know if you ever saw The Shining. Never heard of it. What is that? Uh, it was pretty, <laughs> Stephen King's pretty nasty. He writes a lot of horror. The Shining was about um, a family in a hotel room, and there were these evil ghosts. And, um, uh, one of the main characters was a young boy named Danny. And in this book Stephen King had written, it was Danny uh, as, as an adult with his mother, and they were staying in a hotel room or an apartment. And the same ghost that had attacked him uh, before attacked him in, in this story. So long story short, there was another character in there of this, of this young girl. Um, and she got involved with these groups of people that were kind of like um, – like the Illuminati are now, and they were, you know, have different types of weird sacrifice so they could stay young or something. And it was really creeping me out. And I said, you know what, I don't want to read this anymore. So um, that night I went to bed and I had a dream. And in the dream, there was this girl, and she was trying to uh, uh, accost me, like uh, have, a, have a sexual relation with me. And it was the same situation that was in the book and I felt like I was being attacked and I woke right up and I thought wow I said all I did was read a book and now it feels like something like I opened the door to something I I shouldn't be you know so mm -hmm. I just I just wonder right now like I won't even watch violent movies nothing I don't want to listen to music that's violent I don't want to watch any violent movies I don't want to anything um it just seems like if I even do a little bit, it seems to be opening me up to things. So I'm much more careful now about that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I know if my wife watches certain TV programs and I can hear it, I can't sleep at night. My mind just goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wonder maybe it's because we're just so finely tuned now, you know, yeah. all of uh, we've worked on ourselves, um, we, we've raised our vibration, whatever, we're more finely tuned and sensitive, so where maybe before we could handle that stuff now we can't it just it just seems to it's it's too much it, it's it's detrimental to our our health and well-being yeah or else who's ever making those frequencies and vibrations are getting them home down to more perfection that too i, I read a lot of stuff <laughs> that, that's the scary part i don't like to i i would really just like to uh, get away from all that evil that's out there. It's they're they're getting really too good at it. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I read recently that they now know through this, you know, testing and biofeedback and stuff, that when a person reads or watches something violent, that the brain and the emotional body react. There's it cannot tell the difference between what it's watching and what's real. So the effect on your body is real. And I agree with you. I think because we're vibrating at a little bit higher level and we're, you know, we're cleansing and clearing a lot of the old stuff, those kinds of things don't resonate with us anymore. And our bodies are so super sensitive, especially if you're an empath. Yeah. You yeah. can't, you can't take it. I can't, I can't watch a scary movie. Just, I, it just, I can't do it. No, in fact, I won't do it. Yeah, when I went to Florida this past week, uh, I had I visited my brother, and I hadn't been with him for a while. And he's really in a, he's a great guy, but he's in a really negative place. And it was really hard on me just to be around it sometimes, you know. And we, he went to watch a m movie, and so he was starting to finish a movie that he had started. It was kind of like a sp spy thriller, and. Um, so at first they were shooting the gun, and I could almost feel like the bullets were hitting my body. And then the one bad guy took this guy prisoner. He says, well, I'm going to show you what it's like, what animals go through to get slaughtered. And then he hits him, and there's all this blood. And I go, Glenn, turn that off right now. I am not going to watch that. And he was, like, shocked. Why not? What's wrong with it? And I go, oh, my God. I, I, I almost literally ran out of the car. Yeah, right? Like, like, and he's like, he's watching this stuff all the time. And I said, I can literally feel those bullets hit me, let alone that violence that said, oh, I don't know how people can watch that stuff. Well, you know? they're getting deprogrammed. Yeah. You know, desensitizing so that they're not sensitive to it. Yep. I guess, yeah. yeah. I can't do it. I came in the other day and my, my daughter was watching um, – I don't know the name of the show. It was supposedly really popular, but it's about some guy who's making meth for for the cartel. I, I don't know all the details. But when I walked in, I could feel the vibration in the room. And I sat down on the couch, and I said, what's this? And they were showing this. It was just horrible. It was, these people were, it, it's, it's just, just, I didn't even want to talk about it. It's so violent. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, this turns my stomach. I have to get out. And I left. And I, and I, she says, I'll turn it off. And I said, please, you know, I just can't watch it. But what I do notice, okay, about her, and she's very fearful. And I know why now. You watch that kind of stuff. Your body's going to absorb all of that, and you're going to be scared. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would be terrified. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed my brother, he seemed to be, at different times, like, kind of angry and uh, mean. Like, I don't think he realized it, but I'm real, real empathic and sensitive to every little thing. So, and I was really observing how he was. Um, and so I, I was just wondering, like, if he's watching these kind of movies, how's it affecting his brain? I don't think he realizes what he what, I didn't even say anything to him, but I because I saw everything. But I don't think he realizes how it's affecting him. No, no, he doesn't unless uh, he's into all this all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't. He wouldn't know. No. 
Well, I think you become numb to it after a while. You must, because to me, that'd be the only way you could watch it. <laughs> I would have to be just like totally numb, not feeling, not because. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I had a niece that when she would watch Lassie, it would affect her so bad she'd bawl and cry and squall. Now, Lassie is kind of a mild thing compared to what they show nowadays. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and also I remember back, this has been 30, 40 or more years ago, they did a little study and they took kids who'd never seen a TV before and let them watch TV, and they cried and bawled and squalled because all the, you know, the mean stuff people were doing to each other, and they'd never seen that mean stuff, you know. They weren't used to it. So, you know, with that, that it affects us more than we can possibly comprehend, I think. Uh, yeah, I agree, and I think as we're becoming... Uh, I guess this we're raising up a vibration is setting in the higher dimensions. This stuff just, we cannot tolerate it anymore. And it, I guess this is what I've read about where there would be a split. You know, it, we are widening a gulf between those that are still staying in the lower third dimension and us moving to the higher. And you can see it, you know, like, uh, you know, like maybe 20 years ago or, even 15, 10 years ago, I would have maybe sat through the movie. Now I'm like ready to run out the door. And I would have, yeah. I would have ran it. If he didn't, I would have left. <laughs> I walked outside. You know. So. Go to the beach, right? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, definitely. I would have went to the beach and we had these, uh, what was nice when my brother lived in Florida, what I really loved besides the water was all the nature. He had this uh, waterway right outside his apartment, and there was these huge iguanas um, and birds and turtles and these gigantic fish, and I was just in heaven. Um, yeah, that's why I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll move there, just to be around the wildlife. Like, I miss that here. Like, there's not much, you know, I, I think we're losing a lot of animal and insect species. I don't know about you, but I think it's getting worse. Uh, oh, yeah, they, around where I live, there used to be huge frogs. Mm-hmm. You know, huge ones, and there's none anymore. And a lot of the yeah. rivers that used to have fish in them don't have any fish in them. Yeah, I think we're yeah. There's stuff going on, and um, <clears throat> it's not good. But you know, hopefully, and uh, you know, th things will turn around. I'm I'm banking on it. I was reading something the other day about. I think I posted on my uh, Facebook page about. Um, making sure that you yeah, not only do you set your intention, but that your your expectations um, to have this expectation of something positive and that's very important when you consciously expect something that that um, will help manifest something even more. So I've been trying, you know, working harder at, at, at keeping my self focused on this anchoring in this Eden on earth and, and not letting whatever I'm seeing around me distract me from that vision <clears throat> and fully expecting it to, to manifest. Um, so I'll be doing that for uh, our wildlife and whatnot, you know? Mm, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's what we expect. And yeah. we build our own frequencies around us for yes. health and wealth yeah. and other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, well, the more I mean, I, I read a lot of different things all the time. You know, I'm trying to, like everybody else, trying to figure things out, uh, understand what's going on. But um, it's always changing, but it seems like... Uh, our imagination is probably the biggest gift we have. Mm -hmm. um, that we don't realize how powerful our heart brain is, our gut brains, and our and our minds, the pineal gland, and all all that that we're equipped with. All these this power, because even though there is a dark side, and it seems like there's a big hyperdimensional counterpoint to this, you know, um, 
they're 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 relying on us. We're the batteries because they're so depleted. They're they they need us to survive. So we're the ones with the power. And we, Ooh, you know yeah. what I mean. So yep. how do we access that? And recently, what I was thinking, uh, there's a, a cell phone tower around me, and it's pretty big. And I want to start dismantling that with some organite and whatnot. And <clears throat> what was in my mind was I thought, well, let me go out there, put some organite, because Ken, you know, Ken Kegley's made me some hooks, and I was going to plant them out there. I was going to douse to see how many I needed. Um, and then <clears throat> I was going to set my intention with it to make sure that the tower would it, it emit love frequency instead. It was going to, like, flip a switch. And then what I was going to do was create what I call like a mental construct of that physical counterpart of what I created and then really envision it, really empower it, ask for guidance and help from my, you know, angelic realms and then take that and then replicate it and put it from my mind other places around the globe. You Ooh. see, so I'm using my mind to create stuff because you do in the astral plane. So I could actually move it in the astral plane and start to bring it down with the power of my mind. And because I've already physically made one, so I'm just taking it. I'm asking it. And after seeing what's happening with this group, it seems like we have to ask the right questions, right? Yep. Right, correct. Because, like, I don't see anybody coming here and saving us. Like, I used to believe that the Ashtar Command, Galactic Command, was going to come and save us. And through a series of different events, I realized that, you know, there's a lot of false light out there and that we were just sitting around not doing anything. Yep. <laughs> so I only started dousing about a year ago, um, and I love it. And I thought, well, I felt more empowered. I felt like I, I could take action and do something um, and that we need to do something. Um, but it's just finding what's, what's the right thing to do because it doesn't – I see a lot of uh, – spacecraft, and, and there's a lot of mystery and secrecy about it. Why? You know, and I figured if if the galactic ETs were going to save us, they would have done it by now. I would have done it a million years ago, yeah. Right, right. So I don't get, I don't know what, see, I don't know, I don't really know what's going on with that because it's very confusing. There seems to be a lot right. of control, a lot of manipulation, kind of deception going on for some reason with some beings, I always felt like there was a lot of fighting going on about this planet. I don't have time for that. I'm so, <laughs> I've got other things to do. And I'm, not, I'm just like, okay, I, I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to focus on what it is I can do. And, mm -hmm. and it's like building up my energy, right? Getting, up, yeah. getting that power going up, right? And then I'm, you know, bringing in that love force and, you know, and just hitting this. You're, when you're, that, you're lit, that lit up, then they can't attack you. They can't even see you. You're 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 out of their range because you're vibrating so high. And from that point on, you can just start to see the the planet with all these unicorns and rainbows or whatever you want to start giving out there. And and I'm not even doing. I'm just sitting in my house and I'm doing this um, because we want to be safe, right? Um, and, and so I figured that, that if there are ETs. They probably are us. <laughs> we incarnated, and the, and the children coming in now are these ETs, basically. And it seems like to me it's it's an inside job. From the inside out, we're coming in, and then we're going to transmute all this negativity into positivity, you know, in, into the fifth dimension, the fifth world of peace type thing. So, now, are you talking about within yourself? Yes. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah. So yeah. and that's the other, go that's ahead. great. That's great, Shelley. I think it what you yeah. have described is is exactly the way that the the new earth is going to be created. You're right. It's up to us. Nobody's going to do it for us if we don't do it. And every person who starts, like you've done, think of it this way: if we're all vibrating and creating these beautiful things. That's mm -hmm. what it's just going to radiate outward. That's wonderful. Oh, good yeah. thing. Yeah, because for a long time, I just well before I saw Raymond Grace's when I went to his uh, workshop in North Carolina last October, 
I, I would watch the chemtrail planes go overhead, and I'd run outside, and I'd start cursing at them because I was so mad. Oh. I was so depressed, and I didn't know what to do. And then it was him that helped me feel like I had power, like I could do something. And, and then I realized, like, wow, it's just – it, that's when I started asking questions within myself. I stopped looking outside myself for answers. Right. Because I, I, I was forced to. <clears throat> and then I saw the lesson in it. And then I saw, oh, okay, you know, it's, we, we, I think we're all extremely powerful. I just, we just don't know it or we forgot or, you know, um, mm -hmm. and that's what's fun, finding out what that is. Yeah, my wife and I took a trip to Alaska and then we came back to Seattle Washington, and um, it was on one of those fancy cruise ships. Anyway, um, and I bought some videos from Native Americans in Seattle, and one of them was a lady who her mother had a real hard time with birth and everything, so they had to put like a ball up them and then put weights on them, and so they would open up the birth canal so the baby could come out and stuff. And anyway, um, her mother told her, don't scream, don't scream. Oh, boy. She says, go within. And she oh. said that was the best advice she had because mm -hmm. she went in and she connected with the pain. Mm -hmm. and, and then that calmed it down so everything went, worked good. As good as I can remember, I could maybe find it. Um, yeah, but what she said that was the best thing she did because her mother said, "If you scream, you won't connect with the pain. If you don't connect with the pain, you're not gonna get it better. You know, relieve the pain and, and calm down and just let let it happen." So I think that was just, that was fantastic. And I thought, wow, isn't this a wonderful um, teaching, you know, just to go in and connect with the pain. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that reminds me sometimes I, I take people to the dots. You take them way up above, you know, and you, well, all of you, you, you and the person you're working on, you go up to the etheric, into the dots, and you do the healing up there, and then you come back down. If they're not healed, you go back up and do it again. Mm. And that really works fantastic. But what are the dots? Like you said, go up to the dots? Yeah, that's where your whole being gets so small there's nothing but dots left. Oh. You get really tiny. There's a guy in Russia that could do that. I heard. I learned that in the advanced dow or not dowsing, but advanced healing course. It's one of these guys that's advanced enough. He doesn't advertise, and the only way you can get in is somebody reckon, recommends you, and then you have to call him up. And if he likes you, he'll let you in. If he, your energy doesn't feel right, he won't. So, and he doesn't do anything on. The computer or anything, you know. Ooh. So, yeah, it's one of those kind of secret schools. Um, so where where is he from? Colorado, Colorado. Yeah. Ooh. And <clears throat> I've been there three times. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, this Russian guy would take people up to the dots. And, uh, and then the Russian government wanted to test him. So they had a prisoner that died. So they cut his arms and legs off oh. and told him, heal him. He said, okay. Oh he God. took him up to the dots, brought him back down, alive and whole and in good shape. A miracle worker. <laughs> so when you so really get tuned in and you take people to the dots and I haven't done it for a while, but it's really amazing. Yeah, yeah. You take. Did him. you take his course, Don? Did you say? No, not the guy from Russia. No, they were just told us about it. You know, and it's that's, my opinion. That's amazing. My opinion, from my 
experience is all you got to do is be told this can be done and then you can do it mm. and in fact I've done lots of things and no you know what I, I I I I do I I swear I I do believe that I do believe that but you know then there's that human part of me that uh, you know kind of gets in the way but like the the knowing part um, I I swear it's so good to hear somebody else say it yeah thank you Don yeah mm -hmm. yeah so just, I mean all you gotta do is here you know. Hear somebody say, "Well, you can drown this way, you can drown that way, and you can do it." And you just, you know, I believe all. Or I shouldn't say that word, but anyway, <laughs> it's the way I'm thinking. Is if we can understand or hear what can be done, we can just mm -hmm. go out and do it. Mm -hmm. So what we can figure out our own way to do it. You know? Yeah, we don't have to have a guru. Right. So if we could hear what's possible, then we could find our own way of doing it. Right. But, but we need to, to know that that particular thing is possible. Well, yeah, you got to hear about it. If you don't hear about it, you don't know. But what, don't... what about our imagination? What about our imagination? What about allowing our imagination just to run wild and... Um, you know, break all the stereotypes or all the programming that we have been living with. Yeah, well, like that's kind of like what I did, I think, and uh, unhooking the hooks and cords. Yeah, I mean, but I'm wondering, no one, if, yeah, uh, in, in our every, yeah. I don't know if anybody else that does it, except maybe some people I've taught from the group here. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, I, you know, but when you get really tuned in it's not your imagination anymore something it's guidance yeah something is speaking to you and leading yeah. and it seems like every time right. i do a healing i get led into some deeper realm or deeper ways of doing mm -hmm. things and when, yeah so know, there yeah so there's our guidance there is our imagination there is, um, I, I think that there's several ways of, of being, you know, more expansive as opposed to, you know, this human, this humanness that we're living. Well, yeah, you got to get in the zone. And yeah, that's, and that's, that's a decision. That's, the thing that, that, yeah. that, that, that's really hard to teach. You know, to really get into the zone, get deeper than, uh, say, meditation and, and deeper uh -huh. than your normal dowsing. Yeah, but that's on. for your healing. That That's what you're talking about, right? In your healings? Well, yeah, or you can do it in everyday life, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be when you're doing the healing. It can be when for you yourself. Go out. When you go out looking at a tree, you know, you can just look mm -hmm. at the tree and go inside it, you know. Mm hmm Yeah. Or when you're doing anything. Mm -hmm. Except when you're driving, you don't want to do that. I've done that a few <laughs> times. It doesn't work too good. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, you, you just kind of settle in and be with. That's what the, the old cowboys say, you know, when you're training or working with a horse, you just want to be with. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the best training I've gotten in doing spiritual work is through cowboys. Because, you know, mm -hmm. they say when you're working with a horse, you got to be with. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you listen to those old cowboys... They can do some amazing things with horses. And you watch them work with them, it's just like magic. You can't, it's just like their their mind is, is someplace else than the outward realm that we usually think of. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
So this has been going on for eons, like if cowboys were doing it. Yeah. You it's know, the most it's not just now. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, shoot, yeah. You read some of these old books, and these people were doing things that we think we're just learning now back mm -hmm. hundreds of years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. We just they keep were more relearning. connected. What? Yeah. You get connected, and that's the biggest thing. And you you have to kind of go into your zone to get connected. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, yeah, so we can do that. We get super connected. We just get in, you know, and, and if we ask to be connected, I believe we can be connected. Uh huh. Yeah. See, that's that asking the right question again. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Right on the ball. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Don't ask if it's the uh, if the uh, uh about the what do you call it storm? The, what were you mm -hmm. asking about? Don't ask if the hail. Don't hail. ask if the hail is going to be lessened. Ask. Yeah. Will you? Yeah. Are you going to do what I asked, please? <laughs> be more specific. Will there be dime size, you know, or marble size hail here? No. Will there be any hail here? Yeah. You know, I didn't follow up. I just said, oh, okay, not going to work. Let's go take the cause. I could have had an extra two hours of sleep. <laughs> yeah, but if you would have had an extra two hours of sleep, you wouldn't have that lesson to tell us about. You would have just said, oh, that's just the way it is. So everybody should know this that. This is true. <laughs> this is true. You know, this and is true. Another, it's a good lesson. Another thing I think we can do is Dow's, and, I, and I've been doing that a lot lately, and I believe, and it seems to be working, is Dow's to say, you know, to assist me and asking the right and proper questions to get what's needed for my answers. Mm. Something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound mm -hmm. logical? I mean, yeah. yeah, it you is. Need, and yeah. it helps to be in a good frame of mind. You know, when I was done, it was like, okay, I'm going to check. Because I felt when I had connected and all of this, I felt like it was good. But I thought, well, let me ask, if I had just stayed with that feeling of connection and had, I guess, that knowing that it was going to be okay, I had that. Mm -hmm. But the logical mind, the left brain said, you better check, you better find out. So I did, but because I was tired at that point and I had sort of gotten out of the zone, I was disconnected, so mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, I didn't bring my whole self to that question that I wasn't connected at that point. Mm -hmm. I let that left brain get in the way, too, and you know, when you're tired, and I was tired, it had been a long day, and uh, it just, you know, it was like, it, it was a good lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you get into the zone, because sometimes, like, when I get in the zone and I come out of doing a healing on someone, it takes a while to wake up, you know, to come back to this realm or however you say it. Because <laughs> we get deep into the zone. Oh, yes. <sighs> Felt oh, good. <sighs> I'm going to have to get off, y'all. I'm sorry. I've got a little bit of a, a sinus cold kind of thing, and I've been coughing. So um, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I appreciate all of you tonight, and I've learned a lot from all of this conversation. But I will mm -hmm. talk to you all next week. How about Thank if we you. do a blessing for you first? Yeah, do a blessing. I would, I would appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Oh, how about, should we do a busing first, or should we do a, um, you're not feeling too whoopy? Well, I got, we were working on whatever day it was, this past weekend, and I, it was really hot, and I, I thought I had enough water, but I really didn't drink enough water. I got a little dehydrated, and my sinuses kicked up with some drainage, you know, the dryness, it, it just, um, I, I felt really bad. I slept most of Saturday afternoon and Sunday, all day Sunday. I was just, you know, I was really ill. And uh, oh. I'm better, but I just I just have drainage and a cough. Oh, yeah. Might as well work on you, Ben, as you're here. Well, I appreciate that very much. Okay, a third spiritual dowsing team. Is there any reason not to douse for her? Okay. Can you send her some healing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what questions or what words to use. Can you tell me? Put them into my mind, have them bring them to me, so I can say the right and proper words and the right frequency and tone and vibrations. Get the job done? Okay, well, let's go to it. Oh. Bring the white light of energy up through her feet and up to her head. <clears throat> Fill her whole head and then bring it down shoulders and down her arms and out her hands. <sighs> bring the energy from, <clears throat> from the star system I work with. Bring it down to the top of her head. Push it all the way down. Go for her whole body. <clears throat> Um, send it down into the earth. Just keep doing that. Mm. Yes, yeah, get that going. Get her Macarva going. Perfect. Oh. Get her assemblage point put back in shape. Oh, yeah, your assemblage point was off. It was off a little bit to the left in the front. Oh. Get it back in there and straight there. Okay, now we got that straightened out. Ooh, yeah, she should feel better. Okay. I do feel better. What else do we need to do? Oh, okay, is that enough? Okay, that's what we said. That's all we need to do. So. Thank you. I do feel better. I feel lighter, and I feel not as uh, wheezy. Yeah. You sound lighter. Thank you. I feel better. I I feel it. Can you tell? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're yeah, your assemblage, your assemblage point was off to the left and it brought it back to front where it was supposed to be. What is the assemblage point? <laughs> oh, boy. That's kind of like a chakra, but it isn't a chakra. Yeah. It's an energy that comes, starts out at your chest and it goes out in a cone shape out. And it goes oh, out your back okay. the same way. And when it slides off is when you're ill. And you know, and then if you put it back. All that coughing. Yeah, it gets you better. <laughs> yeah. When we have a go off when you're, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very important thing to do. Like I was at one of the advanced healing courses and there was a gal there. And she was in her lower 20s. And she said, I don't really want to be here. And she'd walk around with her head down and. And, she, and her shoulders forward, kind of protecting herself, you know. And she didn't really want to be here, but her boyfriend and her mother made her come, and, you know. <laughs> so I got her outside, and one day I said, I think her assembly point's off. Oh, Don, you can adjust them? I said, yeah, I can. So I went outside, and, and her boyfriend was there. I said, well, I said, I can either adjust it or I can teach you how to do it so you can adjust it again when it's off. Oh, well, teach me. So I taught him how to do it, and he adjusted it. The next day she come back like a brand new person. Wow. Lots of times when people That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, she says, I have a, you know, this is the best I felt in many, many years, you know. It's just like it took a big weight off my shoulders, you know, or, you know, off, no, well it's more than off the shoulders, off the heart space, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but it gets your energy to flow in the correct way. And the guy teaching the class, this advanced class, <laughs> he doesn't advertise because he doesn't want, you know, to be mm -hmm. found out because it's 
does such good things. He, he thanked me for it because he never knew about Sun Bleach Point, but he had had oh, a full-blown Kundalini awakening for five years. So he sees things, and now he says, that's the first thing I check is the Sun Bleach Point when I work on somebody. He says, I see it, and if it's off, I adjust it back to right, and then we go to healing now. And I forget that a lot, but I was looked at you, and your assembly point was off, so I brought it back. So, Yeah, and they can tell by looking at your assembly point where it is, what sickness and how, you know, and how bad you are. And then you can adjust it. And some people, you got to adjust it several times because it want to spring back part way. You know? mm-hmm. But you get that up there, and yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, you gotta mm-hmm. have it. Yeah, that's the first thing. But I feel like doing a blessing right now, if that's okay with everybody. Oh, we mm-hmm. love that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. oh. I'm gonna take this. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um. Tell us when you're ready. Oh. Okay, getting ready. Okay, ready. I am the power of I am divine love. The power of I am divine love, joy, peace, harmony, blessings, respect, enlightenment, prosperity, beauty. Each and every healing color. The frequencies, vibrations, and tones of the numbers three, six, nine. Nine nine five nine nine seven, magnificence and the gratitude of Sarah flows through me. I am sending to each and every person on this call, all of them and all of theirs, unlimited, unconditional, the I am power of divine love, joy, peace, harmony, blessings, respect, enlightenment. Prosperity, beauty, each and every healing color. The frequencies, vibrations, and tones of the numbers three, six, nine, 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 five, nine, nine, seven. Magnificence and the gratitude of Sarah. To each and every. Oh. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. <sighs> that Thank seems you. to get some energy flowing, huh? Thank you. You're mm-hmm. very welcome. Just thank you. Mm-hmm. Kind of cleared my chest area a bit. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. Mm. No. Now I'm going to start yawning. That's good. That's your uh-huh. processing. When you yawn, mm-hmm. releasing tensions and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I think I might actually sleep really well tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you all so thing. much. There's one thing I I was thinking about doing on the call tonight. Is would it be okay if I took the hooks and cards off everybody on the call? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Go let's... for it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Please what do? What what a question. <laughs> well, I well, you, know, you got to get people's permission. Okay. Yeah. Oh boy, I gotta get my different. Pendulum out here, and I gotta stand up when I do this, and I gotta, I gotta turn around here because I got my things wired up. Uh, and this is an experiment, you know. I've done it for mostly for other people, just one at person at a time. So, <clears throat> okay, etheric spiritual dowsing team. We got permission from each and every one here to work on their hooks and cords. 
Okay, is there any reason why we should not? Okay, let's go to it. Okay. Each and every person on this call, <coughs> we ask that you all unhook the hooks. Loosen up the hooks and take the hooks off of them. And their minds, bodies, spirits, their soul, any organs, their energy field, their aura, their etheric field, ah, and places known and unknown. Ah, oh, their spinal fluid. Oh, that's clear. Just take all those hooks off. In all levels, all dimensions, and all levels of dimensions. All lifetimes, past, present, and future. Oh. Mm. Let's loosen all those cards. Yes. Everything's in there. Oh. Thank you for taking those hooks off. Now they have any energy hooks. Okay, let's take the energy hooks off. Each and every person here on the call. <coughs> Take them off their minds, bodies, spirits, soul, in all dimensions, all levels, and all levels of dimensions. <sighs> the spinal fluid, any organs, <sighs> any thought patterns, <sighs> their aura, their energy field, their etheric field, their astral field, way above their head and way below their feet. <sighs> and take the psychic cooks off and blow them. Their head and below their feet, too. <laughs> and all their chakras. Yes. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's take the psyche, or the hooks off anything known or not known. We known about them or heard about them before or not. Anything we don't know, you know, take them off. All the minds, bodies. Everyone's here is minds, bodies, spirits, souls. Energy fields, or auras, the chakras, the assemblage point. Oh. oh, any organs above their heads, below their feet, their astral plane where they go. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, get those hooks off. Come on, get them all off. Yeah. And any other place that I didn't know to ask, take him off there too. Oh. Oh. Okay, take all the hooks and cords and push them 100 miles away from her. each and every person here. Just get them 100 miles away. Get them all out there. Oh. Okay, you got them 100 miles away from everybody. And I'll push the hooks and the cords on up to the light and have it processed properly, oh, have whatever the light beings, those of the light, do, to do it in a loving and proper way. Thank you. Now, all the voids where the hooks and cords were, clear out to the 100 miles away when they left and went up there, fill that all with white light from my star system. Just fill that all up, white light do. Just fill up those voids. Now cover that void, that white with gold, with gold healing light color. And cover that and wrap them all up in indigo color lights. So, oh, thank you, team. We really appreciate that. Blessings to you, team. Oh. Ooh. Anybody alive yet? Yep, thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was so thank you. Yeah, some people can feel it when it's being done. Mm. I, I noticed I noticed that when um 
you do those things, um, I have kind of a delayed reaction. I get the, uh, I start feeling, oh, sorry. Well, maybe I'm not having a delayed reaction. I'm yawning. Um, <clears throat> I start feeling stuff the next day. Is that oh, possible? Oh, yeah. yeah, it'll clear for several days. It may take a, you know, uh, seven days to peak out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's 72 hours. I don't think so. I think it, the process mm -hmm. is longer than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say that uh, with the other clearings that you've done on me, that I, 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 I am so productive now, whereas before I was just laying around and doing nothing and now I, I'm just like productive mm -hmm. you know that there, there are certain things that I have to do when I wake up and I, and, and I can't leave my kitchen a mess I have to clean it up every time I'm in there and, and so my apartment is is clean so that I now feel like being here, whereas, remember, before I used to, to get that jittery stomach, now I don't have any of that. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, thank you, Don. No, oh, you're very welcome. But it took several days afterwards to uh -huh. have everything cleared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I have a very important appointment on Sunday. I hope I'm okay. <laughs> Ooh, because when when I go through the um, clearing or the what do you call it, the healing crisis, I'm like no good for anybody. So um, <laughs> I hope I'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of one time I brought a gal, or a gal came to me for a healing, and I put her on the massage table, and for some reason or other, I felt I needed to crank the energy up, and I've got some super wing-ding powerful energy to her. Okay. And I put a bunch of them on there, and the frequency was just high. Mm-hmm. If I touched her, just barely touched her, she'd scream in pain. Oh. So I just sat back and looked at her. Mm -hmm. And I did it for three hours. And then she finally left because she had an appointment. And for some reason or other, I was pooped out afterwards. I laid down and slept for about three, four hours. Mm-hmm. And she said when she got home, she was barely driving home, when she got home, she took care of the business she had to do at home. Then she mm -hmm. slept. And for the next three days, she felt horrible. Mm -hmm. She was detoxing. Yeah. And oh, she said, that was just horrible. I thought she was going to die. You know? On the mm -hmm. fourth day, she got up. And this is a gal in her 60s. Mm -hmm. She got up and cooked a meal. She says the first time in five years she's cooked a meal. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I find I'm doing things that I haven't done before. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah, you get the cords off, yeah, and I think mm -hmm. this also loosens up block. Oh, you get that? them off you, and it doesn't stop you. It doesn't. You don't have that stuff holding back. Yeah, exactly. It takes the brakes off, like kind of like taking the emergency brake off a car. It's kind of. Mm hmm You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, see, it'll Pretty keep good. working on you. And you yeah. can say every day I allow more work to be done on me. To... Except on Sunday when I need to be, you know, in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can still work on you and still be in good shape. <coughs> you know? Well, I hope so. 
Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm also sensitive, probably not like you people. You people are super sensitive. But um, when it comes to all that stuff, um, I feel it, whoa, like the, the healing crisis that you go through or the, the detoxing, I really, really, really feel it. And it kind of um, puts me out, you know, like it's not... Uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. And why is yeah. it? Why is it? I, you know. I don't know. It's just stuff that I've been holding on to forever, and it's, it's like, I don't know. I, like I, I don't want it to come out. Maybe, maybe there's you know a, a resistance for it to come out. I can't face it. Who knows? Because well, I, I get what the, what the issue is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, why is it? Just someone. Some old country boy and sitting in his cellar yapping away with his mouth causes that. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. So I'm asking you. Or anybody else that wants to give their ideas or thoughts. Well, it's the, the, the high vibratory energy. You know. Like when you pour all that light into me or whatever you're doing, all all the dark starts to come out. Oh, and, that's a good but, point. Because I've worked on people and they say, I always watch. I should, I, you know, sometimes I ask them to watch and see what they see. Mm-hmm. Okay? You know, I just, I said, don't think about anything in the world. Just think about what's happening in your body. And what mm-hmm. they'll say is that there was there was a darkness in there, and when you worked on me running energy, the darkness got pushed out, but it wanted to mm-hmm. come back. And mm-hmm. it came back, and they said the white energy that you were putting into me uh, dissolved the dark and the the dark energy just turned to light. Mm. Does that make um, mm-hmm. but, interesting? But, yeah, but that that instantaneously, because with me it takes several days yeah. for the dark to come out. <clears throat> oh, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, like when you're training horses, you're on horse time. It doesn't. It does, time doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Just so you get the results. Mm-hmm. No, I want the results. It doesn't have to be precisely in ten seconds or something. You know, like some people, mm-hmm. you do a healing on, and two seconds later they say, "Oh, well, it didn't work." You know, <laughs> but they haven't given it a chance. It's got to let it soak in. I've done healings on people. They go on they get in their car, and their back pops into place. Uh huh. Well, it just took a little time to work, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's my thoughts that we should probably all be able to do that. We just got to get connected and in the zone, so to speak. Yeah. Um, Anybody got thoughts on that? <coughs> mm, somebody's coughing. That, that's me. You're releasing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, How about not coughing in your ear? Oh, we don't I care. Don't. As long as you're releasing and feeling and letting go, don't hold it back. Just let it go. Okay, maybe I'll unplug the microphone when I have to cough. Whatever, you know. Yeah. Of course, I grew up on a farm, and livestock, they cough and fart and stuff like that, so it doesn't bother me. eh? (laughs) (laughs) What's the big deal? It's all just a natural natural response. Uh (sighs) Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Well, we were trained to hold it in. <laughs> yeah, and that's just <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I call it plum dumb, but that's probably not the politically correct thing to say. <laughs> oh, you know. might be right. Yeah. Why? You know. Why? Why should it? You know. Why should it be bad if somebody sneezes or coughs or yawns? That's perfectly normal. Why should normal be bad? I know. <sighs> I'm releasing. I go mm -hmm. out. Get the audit. Uh -huh. <sighs> <sighs> Excuse me. Oh, there's no excuse for someone as wonderful as you. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so is anybody feeling anything from the whatever? I'll let you know tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, oh, sorry. huh? Sorry. No, ask the other ones. Yeah. Ask your question again. I said, does anybody feel anything from any of the work we did tonight? Uh, I usually feel the next day, too. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. It takes a while to process. Then. It does, yeah. And a lot of people that I've worked with, or probably most of them, are saying when they wake up the next morning. That's it, yeah. When I wake up, I notice the difference. When you, when you removed all the hooks and cords, and it was amazing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And what's amazing to me is why is none of these big shot wing ding five hundred dollar for a two day class people teaching that? Because we're, everybody's waiting for you. Oh. To teach it. That's mm. your job. Yeah, I'd like to learn more about the assemblage point because I had heard about it <clears> through <throat> uh, Don Juan, the Carlos Castaneda. Right, yeah. Yeah, I knew oh, about yeah. Yeah. I knew about shifting your assemblage point, like and what that meant. Um, right. so yeah, when you mentioned that my ears perked up. I was like, Oh, assemblage point and I was wondering like how does it get knocked out and you know, I, I and how you put it back in and I guess if if people want to shift it, you know, so they can have a different kind of alternate reality, I guess you also have to have to be careful then because you maybe not might not quite get it completely in and I remember um, when I wasn't feeling too good the uh, last year or so um, I had done a meditation and I, I think one of my guides came in and says that he, he mentioned that my assembly point wasn't quite locked in and I really mm -hmm. didn't know how to put it back in yeah mm. so. I'm very interested in learning about that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. it's um, There's a guy named Whale. His last name is Whale. I can't remember his first name. And he wrote several books, and I read I a read couple, two of them anyway. And uh, when they put the assemblage points in, they, they use huge crystals that look like they'd just be hard to lift. And tell you how tough it is and all that. Well, they ain't all that tough. It's <laughs> if you can see them and just put them back in. But you can do it with your hands. You can use tools. Yeah. Um, basically, you just got to kind of know about them and get educated. It's good to read these books because he gives you lots of charts and graphs where somebody's this way off. It means they're this kind of sickness or they're depressed. It's this way. And, that's all really, really, really good. Except I haven't got time to fiddle around and having somebody come back to me 16 times to get their assemblage points put in. I just want to put it in and be done with it. You know? mm -hmm. Why carry it out? You know? And so I just see them and put them back in. Mm. Okay. And you can do it with your hands. You got to be able to feel them, though. I I think you're starting out. You feel them. You feel the assemblage point, and then after a while, you can see them. Now I 
normally don't see them. I can't remember seeing them on a person when I'm standing in front of them or got a picture of them or something like that. But I can actually see people better if we're just like on the phone talking. That's when it works the best for me, on the phone talking. and mm -hmm. I get tuned into the person, then I can see them or see what I'm looking for. <clears throat> and like that, where was I? I was working on it, and I could see their assemblage point was off, put it back in. And, you know, I didn't have to go and get a 10 pound crystal or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that makes a real good sales point if you're selling books, you know. You got to do this and you got to do that. I think we, a lot of us make it more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And some of them get like over books. The yeah. <sighs> Something whale. His last name was whale. Like spelled just like a whale. Whale. And you can get those charts and everything in the books. Well, you're just a magician, Don. Oh yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We're just getting started. Sharing <laughs> yeah, what can be done. Right. You know, so I might as well. <sighs> Yeah, somebody's releasing there. Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Laugh away. <laughs> <clears throat> it's good to laugh. Laugh yes. loosens things up. Loosens your is. Yeah, loosens yourselves. Yeah. I know. Oh, okay. I'm in the yawns right now. That's great. That Leon mm -hmm. means you're releasing tension. And send your body love. I'll tell you a little story. I got this horse in on trade. And she was like a four or five year old mare, a three year old, something like that. <clears throat> and her body was so stiff that if she wanted to see something, she couldn't hardly turn her neck. She'd turn her whole body. And then if you poked her muscles or any place on it was like hitting a like a like a basketball or something that hard, you know, wouldn't hardly move. And I had three girls over here, four girls. Oh, they're messing around, looking at the horses, and they were about 12, 13 years old. So I told them, you take her in that pen right over there. I says, and you just send love to her. You, mm -hmm. All you got to do is just kind of hold her there and send love. And so if she wants to turn her head around to the side or something, just let her do it. Don't try to control her. Just, just send, keep sending her love. And they sent her love for, I don't know how long, but they sent her lots of love. And she got to licking her lips, processing and yawning and stuff. Then we turned her out, and, and uh, her muscles got softer. Hmm. And then I had a friend over. He was about 21 years old, a young guy, and he's just got... This special way with horses. I, says, I asked him, I said, Corey, could you send love to that? Sure. So he put her in a pen, he sent her love, and she yawned, and she yawned, and <laughs> yawned. And we turned her out in the pasture, and she was out in the pasture, and we stood there and watched her yawning and yawning, and then looking around like, what's happening? You know, she was looking confused, you know. But she kept yawning and yawning and releasing and releasing and releasing. And then, gosh, her muscles got softer. Mm. She could turn her body. So you send yourself love. Send your body love. You know, that'll that'll mm -hmm. help a lot. And find somebody to send love to you, you know. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> because just sending love will loosen mm -hmm. your body. I, I agree, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yep, sending love and you got to send love to all parts of your body that need healing I know sometimes when people are, have a problem or a sickness or illness or whatever they curse their body well mm. it's just opposite of what you need to do you need to send their body mm -hmm. love appreciation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then you process. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's... Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, appreciate my body. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of... Just like all it's done for you. Mm-hmm. And some of us haven't always treated our body as perfectly <coughs> as we maybe could have. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Or, you know, because of certain things, we haven't been in our body. You know, we lived outside of our body. That's my story. Because of certain, you know, traumas and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So you're saying like in traumas when you get a real bad trauma and you leave your body? Mm-hmm. It's one way of your body protecting itself? Well, like I, I, I feel that um, um, when I had the trauma at nine months old, I left my body mm-hmm. because I... I Hated being in my body, like I couldn't handle it. So it's to retrieve that part of me to come back into the body. It's like soul retrieval. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So being in the body um, is a whole other experience. It's an interesting experience because. When I'm in my body and I'm looking with my eyes and I'm in my body, it's, it's, it's a different experience than being out of my body. So I'm trying to practice that, just to stay in the body. <laughs> so it's just it, it, like you're more... <coughs> Sorry, I'm more present when I'm in my body. I'm very present. I'm in the moment when I'm in my body, whereas when I'm out of my body, I'm I'm not in the present. So that's what I'm aware of and practicing. Um, Fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Mm-hmm. So how do you get yourself in and out of your body? Well, it's through awareness. Like, or all of a sudden I'll be um, walking and I'll find myself in my body while I'm walking and it's a different experience. It's, it's a more uh, in the moment experience, present Whereas when I'm out of my body, you know, my mind is here, I'm there, I'm thinking of what I need to do or not do or whatever. So, um, it's, it's just an awareness right now. So, t- how do I get myself in? I, I don't know. It kind of just comes in at the right situation, I guess. Mm-hmm. Do we need to know how we do it, or do we um, need to do it? it? It just kind of gets done, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let it flow. And bring it in. Yeah. It's kind of like when you're in your zone. Yeah. Yes, exactly. More peaceful. More, um, yeah. Yeah. Where there's nothing else around but just you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's the feeling. And it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And that's when you- Go places and do things and connect. And, <clears throat> and, and things happen. Like good things oh, happen. Oh, some amazing things happen. That uh-huh. <laughs> things mm-hmm. happen that you couldn't 
that's way beyond Imagine. your ability to think of. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I've been noticing a lot of uh, amazing synchronicities lately. Oh, isn't that I, 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 I kind of call them setups. Like, I did not set this up. This, you know, the my team or whatever you call it, my guides, totally set this up. You know, when you take a step back and you look at it and you say, okay, you know, and, and you see what it's for. And, um, yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, when, you get your, your, what? when you get those hooks off and you get a blessing, it gets things mm -hmm. falling in you, I think, you know. If yeah, anybody I, else. I've been seeing the number 44, like, in 24 hours, like crazy. Hmm. The, they synchronize, and I uh, asked a lot of people on Facebook, they've been seeing similar numbers. Um so there, there seems to be a lot of synchronicities coming in, too. Yeah. Yeah. Does that mean synchronicity, 44? Yeah, well, I looked it up. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a master number. Anytime you have a double digit like that, master number, and it adds up to eight, which was power and manifestation and being grounded and working at something. Mm. Um, so it, it is a master manifester. How about uh, five, five, five? I... That's a lot of change. Oh. A lot of change. What is that? Change. There's going to be a lot of change. It's oh, five. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so change I, is good. It's it wonderful. is good. Exciting. Yeah. yeah, we need to bring a lot of change in, so. Yeah. But I guess I guess we're, I mean it's hard to say, I, you know. But it seems like we're we're the ones attracting it, magnetizing this, these synchronicities, and they probably are. They could be messages from our future self, our higher self, our angels, our guides, and Gaia you know, herself. It's it's kind of like a great mystery. You don't always know what it is, but we can see it happening. Yeah. Well, I think synchronicities happen to everybody, but people don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a clue. Yeah. They, they or know. they're afraid to accept the fact. Or they don't even know what a synchronicity is. But things happen to them in that way. Yep. Don, I think it's you breathing into my mouth. Me? Yeah, is it you? Someone's breathing. Could be me. I'll move my microphone. There, is that better? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I just hear your voice, but it's it's only sometimes. It's not all the time. Yep. Could so be. Stop, breath stop breathing. <laughs> <laughs> stop breathing. <laughs> okay. How many hours should I stop? <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you stop breathing and you pass out, you start breathing again. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Not to worry. Right. Yeah, you would just automatically, oh, where? <laughs> so that really wouldn't work. <laughs> so. uh, I guess not. You'll we'll never know because I'm not going to give it a shot. No, that's good. I don't want you to try it. <laughs> not when you're on the phone anyways. No. Oh, I can wait till I'm off the phone. Then I can. <laughs> yeah, let, let us know how that works for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are too much. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder who's on the phone. There's Shelly. Is that you, Shelly? That's me. I'm, I'm here, yeah. And Don. And then there's two other people. What was it, Janice? Are you on here? Yes. Oh, Janice. Hi. Hello. And then there's someone else. Who's the someone else? I don't know, 903? I don't know who that is. Well, I, don't know. I remember the, the first time I came to this <sighs> meeting, somebody else had fallen asleep and they were lightly snoring. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That, that happened last week or two weeks ago, I think. Yes, yes, that's how I remember, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oh, you won't even get kicked off for snoring. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <clears throat> ah. So what else can we come up with to uh, share tonight? Um, you got me curious about the assemblage point. How's yours done? <laughs> you know, I'm one of those people. I usually forget to check my own. So how, how do you check? You make the prayer or the blessing? No, and no prayers. No. No. You look. You feel. You look. When you first start, or for me anyway, when I first started about I just started feeling for it <clears throat> and sensing for it. Is it always located the same place on a, on everybody, or is it a different location? Same for everybody when they're healthy. When you're sick, your assemblage point goes off. See, I didn't even consciously think about it. assemblage point on whoever I was working on. I just got all of a sudden, oh, assemblage points off. It came in view. So when it comes in view, and then it gets your attention. And then you can just, you can adjust it, start by adjusting it with some kind of tools, or you can adjust it with your mind, your hands. Now I just adjust it with my mind. So you actually see it? Yeah. Hmm. What's it look like for you? You know, It looks, it looks just like an assemblage point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? You know what it is? A bunch of Legos. <laughs> <laughs> what it is is it starts out in your chest, okay, in the center of your chest, your heart space, oh, yeah. I call it. And it goes like a cone. It's an energy vortex like deal. It starts out there, and it goes out wide, and it goes out several feet. Oh. Well, I don't know. It goes out a couple feet anyway. Uh-huh. And I started out just feeling it with my hands and adjusting. At first, I started out adjusting it with uh, energy tools. You know, I'd get hooked onto it, and then I'd adjust it. And, mm. and then, you know, you don't always have energy tools with you, but I usually have my hands with me. So I just start adjusting them with the palms of my hand. Hmm. And now I can see them. I'm better at seeing when I'm not with the person, you know. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, like I wasn't seeing the person I was working on. You know, like you normally so, get dealing. So do you think it's a distraction when you see the person? Like you're with the person that you're working on? I don't know. I never thought about it. I haven't got uh -huh. time to think about that stuff. <laughs> think about the results, you know. And mm -hmm. it comes to me when it's needed. Okay. See, I, I do lots of healings every week. And I very, mm -hmm. I don't know, shoot, it's been a long time since I thought about the assemblage point. So I'm assuming, and the assumption's the lowest form of knowledge, but it's a wild guess. And this is the first person that's had assemblage points that mm. off in quite a while. That's my mm -hmm. guess. You know, I get shown what to do when it needs to be done. I don't know. Right. And why is that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know. And I haven't got time to moan and drone and mm -hmm. house for four or five hours to try to get it figured out. I just accept it and thank them for the help, whoever does it, and go on. Because I don't have time or the desire, for sure, I don't have the desire to get all worked out and, oh, who did it? And, you know. Mm -hmm. What month did it happen to me in my life? <laughs> all that. You know, I'm kind of over that. Mm -hmm. do, we, do we need to know? You know? It's on a need to know basis. If I need to know, I get. The idea is brought to me. If I don't need to know, why waste my brain with it? You know? It's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, if I. 
I, it seems like I need to know because if I know what the issue is, then I could, um, like a lot makes sense and, um, and I could let it go easier um, and I would know how to work with it and all that stuff. Mm. So, but that's me. I, I'm like really curious. I'm like yeah. maybe a little too curious, but I'm very curious and I need to know and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but if you work with a lot of people, you don't have time to need to know. Yeah. I mean, it's just... No, but just for yourself, for your stuff. Like with other people, it's maybe it's not important for you to know. Why would it be important for me to know if it was mine? If I just get it fixed? Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. No, I'm just asking. I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, why? Um, what did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking to my kitty cat. <laughs> oh. oh, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> She's... She's trying to. I'm. I'm sitting too long, and I have to play with her, and I'm not getting up. Come on, you. Uh huh. She uh, for me to, to need to know it. It helps me understand. Um, my like it helps my mind. It helps. It just helps. It helps me when I think I'm crazy to know that I'm not. You know things like that. Mm. Like I. I, I need to understand. Hmm. I, things, I, I guess it needs to make sense. I don't know. No, I, I just feel good when I understand things with myself. Hmm. <coughs> yeah. For me, mm -hmm. I get to the point of, you know, this is just the way I am, especially when I get into really a serious deep healing and stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the no. difference? They'll tell me what I need to ask, and mm -hmm. I'll ask it, and I'll do it, and I'll forget it. And somebody will say, "You remember when you did that healing on me, and such and such happened?" I said, "No." I said, "I forget. <laughs> it. I don't have a need to know. Mm -hmm. I don't have a need to remember. You know? Whether it's right or not, you know, might be more right for me to think that way than somebody else." Oh, no, I, I think um, oh. that why would you need to know like, for other people? You, you, to me, you would have to let it go in order to really do the work. Yeah. To be clear. And just follow the guidance. But well, what about if you get in the zone so deep and you mm -hmm. healing... And then you come to, and the person's healed, and you didn't know anything about what you did. What do you, mm -hmm. well, how would you think, well, I got to know what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you, yeah. I mean, you don't know. Oh, that makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. No, no, it's just, I think it's an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anybody that, that I know of that knows a perfect answer. Mm -hmm. No, it's individual, I guess. <coughs> yeah. Don, have you ever used a uh, Vogel crystal? Yeah, I got one. <gasps> you do? Yeah. I, I wanted to get one. They're not real. They're not cheap. But, no, uh, I got a cheap one at a, at a oh, what do you call those things, a rock shop or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got it for like $44. There's the 44. I told you I'm seeing 44. Oh, my God. I've been seeing it oh. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember. Maybe it came out wrong. But anyway. I don't know. Yeah, and they're really, really, really good. Chris. Okay. That's I, I, there was this one place I was looking online. It looked fantastic. It was this uh, you know, necklace crystal. It was like 300 uh, yeah, some, the, some of them are a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, they they better win me the lottery for that much money. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I I uh, I'm very uh, drawn to them. And uh, yeah, and I like them, and I was drawn to them, and I got it. Okay. And, 
All right. Well, maybe I'll, I they sell them on eBay for like eighty dollars, you know, here and there. Oh, so, uh, really? <clears throat> what I've been told about the pe from the people that are really into them, qualities and stuff, and I definitely don't know that much about crystals, but I've used mine a few times, and I don't know. I'm not real through it. I mean, maybe if I was trained by Marcus, the guy that invented them, or found them, or discovered them, or whatever you want to say, I might be more enthused. Yeah. But, you know, if you're getting super-duper wing-dang amazing results without using any crystals or anything, yeah. why get too excited about them? Right. Well, did you ever hear of uh, Tom Brown, Jr. that formerly laid the Tracker School? Yeah. Yeah. One of his books. Fantastic. Yeah, I have a couple of them. I actually met him because he, he used to be in New Jersey. Oh, where does he know? Um, I don't know if he moved to Florida or not. I knew he had a school here in the Pine Barrens, and I went. That's where I met him one time. It was mm -hmm. a while ago. Yeah, he's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I read a couple of his books, so I know about his uh, grandfather, the Stalking Wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the grandfather, Native American. Yes. Grandfather? Yeah. And I I remember when, when Tom was talking about his training with grandfather. The grandfather said, you know, with um, all the things, you know, the medicine bags and the and the drums and the tools that they had, they were just all props. And then after a while, you don't even need them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we like to have our props. I mean, I like to have, you know. Um, and I remember he was teaching Tom how to do a waking meditation. So, that, you know, he's awake and, you know. At the same, well, you're meditating, but you're awake. So I guess you'd be in a theta state of mind, you know, while you're awake. Mm -hmm. um, and I know when I met Tom, the first thing, you know, after you read about people, you meet them in person, you're, like, really curious as to what these people are like. And my first impression was that he had, th he was holding three points of view at the same time. So he was in three, you know, three worlds or whatever at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I yeah. have that situation at times. I bet, I bet. Yeah, yeah. It's real hard because my wife will be talking to me about we're discussing something. <laughs> all of a sudden, oh, I feel so I'm all over. I think you lost me. You know, yeah. <laughs> and she starts over. <laughs> but she can't. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, how long were you there meeting? It was just for a day because I was, I was interested in doing the training. Um, but he, before you got to any of the classes, like survival skills and stuff, you had to take this basic class for a thousand dollars. And like I already knew that stuff, you know, <laughs> and I didn't want to spend it. So. Um, Boy, he's making some bucks off. Oh, that. yeah, he was making some money. He was driving a Hummer. Oh. And that made me think twice when I said Oh, God. So, um, oh, I shouldn't say anything. Yeah, well, no, he, Cancel you know. That. Cancel. Yeah. Cancel. But, uh, yeah. but I read his books. They're pretty fascinating. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just read one. Mm -hmm. My problem with that book, though, is when I started, I had a hard time putting it down. I might be up wee hours of the night reading the thing. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful. The information is all, to me, logical, you know. Yes. Yep. You know, it was like that guy that had me on the phone tonight, and all of a sudden I saw that it was however many minutes after eight. I said, oh, no. Wait <laughs> for my call. You know, and he says, I can't talk to very many people, you know, about this mm -hmm. we were talking about because they mm -hmm. don't comprehend it. I said, oh, it's all logical to me, you know. And that's why it's so nice to have these calls where we can share back and forth things that we know and somewhat logical to us. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, you're not kidding. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Share ideas and blessings and 
too good for each other. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, I think I'm going to go to bed because it's 11.15 over here, so. Okay. Oh, you're on the East Coast, yeah. Yeah, I I'm the Jersey tomato. <laughs> Jersey tomato, huh? Holy tamale. Jersey tomato, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well. I suppose it's about nice. time to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. Yep. Oh, yeah, thank you, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week, hopefully. Yeah. Yep. I'll Both talk to well. you soon, Don. Okay. Blessings to thank all. You. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Don, Don, could I ask you one question? Sure. Um, there's, you know, I, I don't know how to douse, really. And there's a course get, being given online for $25 um, that it was advertised on your Facebook um, by this guy. And I, I'm just wondering if you can douse to see if I should take the dowsing course. Oh, boy, you want me Could to you? douse to see if you yeah. can take the dowsing yeah. course from yeah. somebody online? <laughs> oh, boy. Do you want me to try and get his name? No, you don't need to. You can just think of him. Okay, I have his okay. face in my mind. Okay, because we don't want... <clears throat> Okay. Is there any reason why I shouldn't douse for her about going to the dowsing course? You don't know. Okay. So she take that twenty-five dollar dowsing course, and that's pretty reasonable. Mm-hmm. From whoever it is. Uh, it's online. She's looking at it on the uh, internet. It's, yeah. Okay. Can you my third spiritual dowsing team work with hers? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You guys work together and talk it over and tell us whether she should take it. Can you answer us now? Should you take it? Oh, no. What's the answer? No. Oh, you see? I'm so happy I asked you. Because I felt that. Oh, you thought, did. And then, yeah, you know, but I, I thought it was, you know. <coughs> you already um, doused for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in my mind. <laughs> well, you know, you don't need tools to douse. Uh huh. Tools are, but they're so much fun. Well, I I can't get over what you're doing with your pendulum, and I think it strengthens it. Well, it cleared the the clearing stuff that you do. Yeah. I, I would like to be able to do that. You know, with well, the pendulum. Well, maybe I should teach you. Maybe I should have an yeah. online course. Yeah. That was to see if I would go on your course. <laughs> I'm wondering oh. if I should learn dowsing. Oh, yeah, anybody can. No, but I'm wondering. Like you... I can tell you what. You start out, you just pick up things in your house, like food. Yeah. Is this good for me to eat right now and hold it to your chest? And if you sway back, that's a no. And if you sway forward, that's uh -huh. a yes. Okay. Strong is yes, weak is no. Yeah, and start out with little things, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't try to douse for a lottery or something. You know? No. When you don't but, even know how to douse, but douse for little things, you know. But I would love to be able to do those clearings, you know, reversing the, mm. the, the pendulum and, you know, unless yeah, well, I could say just um, a prayer or something. I mean, I, I do have certain healing tools that I use. Well, not tools, but prayers and things that help. <laughs> but the the big clearings that you guys do with the pendulum <clears throat> is pretty amazing. I, I I would love to be able to do that. Yeah, we well, could teach you. First, you got to get learn the basic dowsing and practice that for a while, and learn how to get to yeah. practice being connected. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, thanks, Don. Thank you. Thank Blessings you. to all. Blessings. Bye. Blessings. Good night.